Good morning, good afternoon, good, you know, every time y'all listen to this or watching this. Listen. There's no more dope on the streets, it's all fat. It's probably population control and China sent. The time is now, man, it's best you repent. You knew it. There's a plague in these streets. They stay a slave to these streets. Cause there's a plague in these streets. We all knew it. We do, we do, we do. These drugs is taking people's souls. These drugs, they try to fill black holes. These drugs is killing our kids. These drugs, man, you know what it is. You knew it. We all knew it. We all knew it. There's a plague in these streets. They stay a slave to these streets. There's no more hope when you hit rock bottom. There's dark times, man, everybody's got them. But these drugs gonna make it much worse. You know these drugs are the devil's curse. You knew it. We all knew it. We all knew it. Yeah. Uh-huh. 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 There's a plague in these streets. They stay a slave to these streets. What up, Ian? There's a plague in these streets. in these streets they stay a slave to these streets because there's a plague in these streets we all knew it yeah. you gotta do better y'all god bless you going out to anyone caught up in the bless up get off the Thank you, brother. Yo, what's good? This is Marky Walker, and this is the THHC Podcast, episode 190. We have a Boston Briz. We're going to dissect basically an album of his, but the way I'm calling it is his 2023 greatest hits, man, and it's the review. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got the artist to this to the left of me. Um, introduce yourself, sir. What's going on, man? First off, uh, Maki, thank you so much, man. I've, you know, I'm tapped into what you're doing, and, and I just love it. I'm so glad to be on the show. It's an honor, straight up, for real. Hey, man. Listen, I've been listening to your music. I tapped in. This is things that I've, you know, I do. You know, I, I, I kind of, and my when I discover artists and I like them. I kind of uh, seek them out and listen to their music and and, and promote them. You know, I mean, I don't see no other way uh, around it. Um, Thank you, brother. More of that sharing the music they love. If I love something, I'm gonna share it. You know. Um, Thank you, man. Oh, not my woman though, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I love it. If I uh, hear it, you know, but you know, but um, I, yeah. Uh, and you know, thank you for uh the the promotion and thank you for uh my pleasure, know, man. The respect that you know that you you give me. When exactly. You, Speaking two way street, my brother. It's a two way street with that. You already know. Exactly. But uh, yeah. So uh, I am Phil Rizik. I'm also known as Riz. Just call me Riz. Um, I've been in music for a long time. I decided about 20 years ago to go hard, like real hard. It kind of like, kind of was like a calling. Honestly, it, it really. I had gone through so so many dark times, and I was kind of like a brainwashed athlete all through high school and the beginning of college. And I just my body started breaking and. I fought these depression demons and God kind of called me to the music and it's something that I knew I always could do. Um, my mother had songs out to Reese Rizek. She's an absolute genius. So, I mean, I literally growing up, all I heard was my mom singing like an angel and playing the Yamaha, uh, acoustic. So, I mean, I've been a long time rock singer for about 20 years, many, many, many bands, um, shout out anomaly, triple distilled. Um, 
you know, and about 10 years back, I would say like I had, uh, the best band I had was anomaly. And so we had like this horrible breakup where like, it was like the pinnacle. It's like our biggest show. And, you know, I, I told the guy, I didn't even want money. We get paid money. We brought most of the people, you know, there's a hundred people next to Fenway at Copperfields. I think they since shut down, but literally the band, broke up at that show and the point being is like a rock band it's so hard to keep together right like three or five people it's it's very hard to keep together this people are messed up on on alcohol or drugs and it's like a marriage with three to five people so i mean the thing is i took a break from that scene because it, it hurt me so much like we i would just have the goal like let's at least get in the studio and get this down so we'll have art that will live on we can be proud of they never let me do that, Maki. They always broke my heart. So the past 10 years, I stuck mostly to the open mic scene, karaoke shows, hosting open mics, hosting karaoke shows. I always kept my chops up because, you know, as an artist, this is what keeps me alive is the music. So I never, you know, I never gave up on it. And I kind of knew this would happen um, coming from the rock and roll scene and just rock and roll is my number one. But hip-hop's right there man you know I've, i love all types of music if it's good i like it but literally it's real close with the rock and the hip-hop and so the beginning of last year i was very fortunate enough i was blessed to uh link up with my producer engineer rockwood that's rockwood productions out of stoughton mass and it's just been a blessing ever since man last january me and rock got started and i put out something like 20 songs last year um Two, two of them were collaborations. Shout out Collada, shout out Smiley. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just been gravy ever since, man. We're, we're doing something new here. You have a rock singer on a hip hop beat. I'm trying to collaborate, stay busy and, and do everything I can and just, just elevate, man. So, I mean, that's kind of the gist of it, brother. And, you know, it's, it's, it's people like you, uh, they make it, you're making a difference, man. We're trying to do something here in Mass, in Boston and put it, put it out there, you know, for yeah. the city. So thank you, brother. That's that's the gist of it, man. No, hundred percent. That, that's a good wrap up, man. You know, uh, that's a good introduction. People will pretty sure people will. Um, thank you. Cling to your story because you know it's probably relatable. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, it real. is Friday, and uh, you know my guest. I don't know if you noticed. I think I told you this, man. I don't really try to surprise it on him, but you're my co-host right now, and then we're gonna break down your album. You, you got you got to work for me first, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to earn your. You know what I'm saying? Earn your keep. Ain't floors, mop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ain't nothing for free in this world, brother. You already know. <laughs> nah, I just joking. But um, we just gonna talk about some new music that dropped today. Super. And, uh, usually, I think I pretty much listen to all these albums, EPs today, and I just want to give some shine to other artists. Uh, awesome. While you're on as well. So let's just uh, let me put that scroll um uh, below. And the first one, let's scroll. Let's let's scroll one time and then we're going to get into it but what i do is i'll explain it a little bit so every time i read off a, 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 a um an artist and this the album ep i'm going to give it a rewind or i'm just going to go to the next one so, okay what's up and, and usually that's never the case is i listen to good music and people usually recommend good music and I usually don't put bad music. I tell you what, man, they don't throw that word connoisseur around, man. You know your music. <laughs> Straight up. So um we're gonna start off. Is it oh it's, it's still going? I thought it was it's longer than I thought. <laughs> you got Jeff in the chat, man. Shout out to Jeff Marquise. Um, yeah, man. What up, Jay? All right, so here we go. We're gonna um all right, here we go. So basically, I'm gonna read them off. I'm gonna do the rewind. Just, 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 you know, saying, be my sidekick real quick. Marv one, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Yes. Little Derek, skip the kid. Mean Gene and the People's Machine too. Hey, Liam, how you doing? Planet Asia and local astronauts, no retirement. I did not listen to that yet. I cannot lie. Back with Sweetie Queen. It's called Burn One. I didn't listen to that yet, but go support on Bandcamp. Mickey Diamond, Rao Duke, Super Shredder. I love Mickey Diamond. Wolverine, Action Figure 973. Uh, Luchador's Going Platinum was just destined to come. I like that. Dope EP. SD Knack, Future Wave, Stone. Come on, man. P.A. Dre, Akilah Lee, Pastel, Blues. 
Eddie Kane, last exit to Crooklyn. My man from Brooklyn. Vegas and Kill, bed Vintage. I did not listen to that yet, but I will. Um, but most of those records, these are the records. I just want to give shine to these people, man. Again, Marv One, Little Derek, Skip the Kid. Um, you know, I just want to read off these names. Planet Asia, big fan. Local astronauts, uh, he's a producer. I guess the producer's a producer. I haven't tapped into their work yet. Back with Sweetie, I'm a huge fan. Uh, Mickey Diamond, huge fan. He has, he's been going, he's on an incredible run. He has a stop. Raul Duke's a great producer that works with him and others. Uh, Wolverine, Wolverine, I'm not, uh, uh, I'm getting tuned into him. Action figure, me and him chat on <laughs> online once in a while. Uh, SD Knack, he's from Lynn Mass. So shout out to the Massachusetts artist, SD Knack. Future Wave, you know, he's an underground legend for production. And uh, P.A. Dre, another underground legend, producer. Akil Ali, a favorite artist of mine. Eddie Kane, another favorite artist of mine. He's from Brooklyn. Vegas is, uh, I believe, is a rapper. And Kill is the producer. I know Kill's the producer. i got to get into Vegas. That's why I put it on there to remind me. So those are, have you ever heard of any of these MCs or rappers or producers? Like, you know. You know, honestly, mean, um, there's. There's so much talent out there, and you know now that you have you have these tools to put your music out. There's just so much talent. There's so many names. I haven't heard of any of them specifically. However, I do know there's a lot of great music happening all over this state. And and you mentioned Lynn, Lynn Lawrence Low. Like that's some real neighborhoods up there, man. And I know um there's some there's some really good hip hop coming out of Lynn. That's what that's what I know because it's real up there. You know, 100. Oh, There's a lot of great Lynn artists. I'm actually working with some Lynn artists on my new project. Mm -hmm. I got an album coming out. That's all I gotta yeah. say. Yeah, gotta buddy. Watch out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I love yeah. you. But um, salute to Jeff from um, you know what I'm saying? Dartmouth, Mass. Speaking of Mass, this is my boy Jeff from Dartmouth, Mass. He's a ride or die, man. This is what he's basically a, a co-host from the sideline, man. Very and cool. Speaking, speaking of co-host with the most, my real co-host, man. That you know, I you know, I utilize his talent once in a while. Ben Frank, he says salute. What up? What up, Ben Frank? Ben Frank is the man, man. That's what my, that's, salute, that's my ben. I, I've been trying to get him to be the real co-host for a salute. while. I'm with him, but um, yeah, yeah. Let's get the let's get the uh let's get the show with a roll. Absolutely. Uh, the next uh usually what I do next is um I do uh um news news like you know breaking news you know mm -hmm. um. But, you know, I call it fact checker news, right? And um, so that's basically what it is. Fact checker news. Um, and what I do is basically speak on uh, hopefully mostly positive things, you know, that happened this day. Uh, speaking, you know, that happy birthdays first. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. Uh, you know, Pharrell Williams. B. Oh, Simone. Wow. B. Simone. Juicy J. Okay. Colin, Colin Powell, uh, Sterling K. Brown, great actor. Betty Davis, R.I.P. Uh, Booker T. Washington and Greg Peck. Um, those are some birthdays. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. What you think about any of those? Uh, man, those birthdays. <laughs> hey, shout out Pharrell, man. That's a talent right there. Yeah, that guy is. I mean, he's a genius, musical genius. I'll say it. He's amazing what he does. Speaking of, you know, like, cause it's funny because speaking of uh, high, I don't want to say high profile producers, but I, I believe this dude's name will be in the in the runnings eventually. Won't you, this is a good time for you to speak on Rockwood Productions. Talk about your relationship with the company and the, and the individual. Absolutely, man. But, you know, like, like I had touched on, um, I linked up with Rockwood last January and, I mean, it's just been a complete blessing and I'll tell you, um, I touched base with him right before I went down for a Florida visit. I went on a little bit of a singing tour down there. And, um, you know, I'd always been looking. I got in the studio 20 years ago when I first started, too. And I always knew I was going to get back there and, and, you know, God would make it happen. And, you know, meeting Rockwood, Rockwood Productions out of Stoughton was that blessing was, you know, I'm all in. And it was like a miracle. So I, I touched base with that dude. And he was just so down to earth on the phone. And, you know, I went by there. Well, first off, I was going to Florida, right? So I had to talk with him. I said, you know, 
this is my background, rock singer. I like all music. You know, do you have music, instrumentals, whatever, you know, that I could sing on that, that I have that are melodic. And he said all day. And so you can get, go out, check him out on beat stars, check mm -hmm. him out on uh, Instagram. There's a link to go right to his catalog. And he's a genius, man. You know what I mean? You don't get in the source magazine three times for nothing. And he's got a formula that works. He's an absolute beast of an engineer, pro tools guru and, and producing the beats. You know, when you have a producer and an engineer in one, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it, man. It's all put together for you. So it's the mixing, it's the mastering, it's the producing the beat, it's the audio engineering. I can't say enough about Rockwood. Uh, and he's worked with some top dogs. And I'll tell you, um, stuff he's doing with Smiley, Smiley sick with it. Stuff yeah. he's doing with uh, Colada, Mike Di Natale. I mean, he. We have a crew over there that, like you, we're trying to put Boston on the map. We're trying to put Mass on the map, and I will always work with Rockwood. Shout out Rockwood! Thank you for everything you've done. And as you listen, and and you said the same thing. The more I work with that cat, yeah, it only gets better, and it only gets better. And he's not just hip hop. I got him tracking guitarists. I got him tracking Berkeley guitarists, and they're like. That, you know what I mean? I got the hand percussion over there. He does it all. So God bless you, Rockwood. God bless the Rockwoods. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, let me, I said, getting a little bit worked up here, but let yeah. me tell you this. I talked to him and I told him exactly what I was going to do. I said, all right, I'll come back from Florida. I'll take the tour. I'll prepay you for a session. And um, when I walked into his studio, it was like a wet dream, man. It was like fifty thousand dollars of he, he knew every penny what to put it into. Oh, I, come in there, <laughs> I, I come in there, there's Spotify plaques, Smiley and Kalada got Spotify plaques, and uh there's a source magazine plaque with his picture. And wow. I knew what time it was, man. So yeah, that's my dude. Salute. No, shout out to uh you know, Rockwood Production Band. Um, you know, let's just put it this way. I know of him and I am working with him. That's all I got to say. I ain't going to yeah, say nerd buddy. else. I ain't going to say nerd else. <laughs> yeah, buddy. You know what I'm saying? But Kareem Abdul-Jabbar surpassed Wilt Chamberlain as the all-time leading scorer on this date. Now, we got number three is some an album anniversaries. We got Tracy Chapman, her album Tracy Chapman. What up, Nick? In 1988. David Bowie, Black Tie. White Thank you, Nick. Thank you, brother. 1990. Dude, what are you doing? Having another podcast? I don't know. I think I'm on. I, my bad. I think 2013, man. I'm trying to conduct a podcast, man. You got me? You can mute your, you can mute yourself if you, if you know. Come on. No, no. I'm back. I'm sorry. I think All I'm right. on I'm just, a couple yeah. other things. Okay, and that's going on right now. I'm trying to, like, okay. What's up? You got something to say? David Bowie's my guy, man. David Bowie is one of my top guys and rest in peace. Such a genius. Um, just one of those cats. I remember, you know, when I was real young, like when my first, some of my first memories, I mean, remember seeing a David Bowie video on MTV when it was, when it was music. Right. I remember seeing like, let's dance and just being like, just in awe of his, his, his musicianship his vocals, his style. Like he, yeah. you can look at that guy and know like, that's not your average cat. Like he, he ascended to a certain level of just amazingness. So rest in peace, David Bowie. I covered, I cover a lot of Bowie, whether it's let's dance, Ziggy Stardust. Um, oh, so you do cover kind of band. Yeah. Situation. Yeah. I know that about you. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I enjoy writing. Put it that way. I love original music, but you know, I'll go to the open mics and do some covers. I'll go to karaoke and keep my chops up. But absolutely, um, I love it. I love it all, man. You know that. That's what's up. I like that. I like that. Um, you know, for these albums, man, Tracy Chapman, uh, Woo! incredible Woo! singer. Uh, I love that album. I, I I gotta do a review on that album. If anybody wants to do, sit down with me and uh, on the THHC podcast and break down Tracy Chapman. Let me know. Uh, that's oh. a great that's an album I would love to break down with somebody. Such an amazing artist, man. David Bowie, come on. I grew up with all types of music. I, I, I love this album. Uh, even James Blake is, is more of a, a, a new, I don't say new artist, but overgrown the album. That's a great album. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just like want to, you know, give shout outs to, to other artists. 
you know, uh, it's all love here, man. I, I try to spread optimistic. I feel that. I feel the love, brother, for real. Five, more than anything else, man, because it's, it's, too, it's not, it's not worth it, man. It's not worth it. I'll be telling you, it's not worth it. I'll, I'll be, I'll That's be like, what I'm saying. I'll be looking at people like, yo, what are you, you spending all your negative energy on? What are you uh, doing? You right? Yeah, take that up the street, bro. I'm, I'm sorry. I feel you. Yeah, man. But I, right, so you ready to break down your album? Let's get into it, man. All right. Man. Let's get into it. All right, we got to do it, man. THHC Podcast, episode 190. Boston Rays, 2023 Greatest Hits Review with Artists. Now, do you want to explain to the audience how we came up to 10 to 11 tracks, or you want me to do that? Well, um, what? yeah, I mean, you start it, and I'll finish it. All right, okay. So basically... We're going back and forth. We're talking about how can Boston Riz get on the show, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, Riz, I only do albums and EPs. I only do, I only break down albums. I don't waste my time on singles. You know? <laughs> I so love it. Know, this, this is basically a mafia talk. Let's just imagine just talking in Italian, you know? So we're going I back and it. forth with spaghetti, you know, and meatballs and stuff. So I'm just joking. But, you know, you're going back I and forth. It, I, don't, I, I don't do singles. He's like, I said, I only do albums. I said, okay, I got an idea. I said, let's put together an album of your greatest, of your greatest singles, meaning, and just put it as a make an album, like a mixtape. Mm -hmm. So that's what where this this came from. So, uh, so when you see the Riz and Miz mixtape, it's on all digital platforms. So go check yes, it out. Sir. Um, and then go check out the rest of his singles. Cause you said you had twenty singles last year, right? Um, yeah, I would say like cool. like seventeen solos, and then I had a couple collaborations. Uh, all I need. Rockwood Productions put it out. That's me and Smiley. It's an absolute banger. And, and you heard Evil World. Rockwood put that out. Me and Colada. They're just. I'm very proud of what I put out last year, and I put out. Um, I'm always looking to get better, of course. But yeah, I mean, you know, we had a great talk too. If you recall a little more about what's the advantages of a, of an independent putting putting out an album or putting out singles, and yeah, you know, granted, I've been doing in this music game for a long time this putting officially releasing music is actually new to me you know 20 years ago i'm pressing cds now we have these audio distribution software whether it's a distro kit or a tune core you could put it all out there and um yeah it's just what i what i what you know and i'll i'll learn more from you and from from other cats but the way i saw it was i i, I wanted to put out an album and then I thought about it more and I'm like, I'll just put out singles. So really, um, severe. I look at the singles, the collection of singles that I put out last year as my album. I, I look at that as my album and I'm going to do that each year. I look at that as my album because it's easier to market that way. Single by single by single. It's better for your wallet. And that's just the route I'm going as an artist. You know, if I make an album, it's going to be because I got signed by a major. Otherwise, I'm just dropping singles one or two every month. And that year of singles is my album. Last year was Rock Sanctuary. This year will be called World Tour 2024. And I got a lot of more. I got a lot of more. I already know you, I already know you got some, some songs lined up. We're going to probably talk about those later. Absolutely. Um, I, got a, I, got a quick, I got a quick verses for you. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to entertain and ask questions at the same time. Um, Joe Rogan versus Joe Budden. What do you mean? In a fight? I don't know. Whatever you want. I don't know the other dude. I know Joe Rogan. I'd vote for him for president. Joe Rogan is as solid as they come. I love that guy. And I mean, I've never heard anyone even speak bad about him. And if they did, I would just walk away from him because that Joe Rogan he keeps it a hundred, and that's a solid cat, right? That right there, and I think you agree. Pretty sure you'd agree. Uh, <laughs> or not? Me, me and Joe Rogan. I mean, it's not like I know the guy. Yeah. But um, from what I've seen, um, he can be controversial at times. Oh, but, he but, pushes the envelope for sure. Yeah, but like you said, he he speaks his mind. Um. Uh, he speaks his mind. He, he, um, oh, yeah, he'll let you know. He'll let he you know his truth. Let's put it that way. 
He doesn't sugarcoat it, man. But I mean, if you look into him a little more, his bio and stuff, he's a very well-rounded cat. He really is. So shout out Joe Rogan. Salute. Yeah, that's what's up. We're gonna go uh Paul McCarthy versus John Lennon. Oh, you, you're crazy for that one, man. Come on, yeah. man. Come on, I gotta do it. I love the Beatles. You know, I, I remember being I a kid. Too. I did the, I did I did what I broke down one of their albums already. Of course. Uh, I remember being uh, I'm not getting trying not to get sidetracked, but I remember being a kid and and um you know, my mother giving me like a double disc of Beatles and the double disc. Wow. Yeah. Attention spans were better and greater back then, right? Buddy, yeah. And the thing was, <laughs> I listened to like all 30 songs and I'm like, every one of them was good. And it just blew me away. And I didn't know what the heck they were talking about. It was just so genius. The Beatles are just so genius. And um, John Lennon versus Paul McCartney. I couldn't pick one, man. I pick them. Tie goes to the winner, both winners, man. I could not. You couldn't pick I, one, huh? No, I don't. I'm not partial to either one of them. They are both. Um, no disrespect let's, to the actual god. Go. Those are those are gods to me. Both. Let's of them. go. Let's go. Let's go, man. Let's go to the next one, man. Mick Jagger versus Elvis. Man, I mean, for my cup of tea, I got to go Mick Jagger, but you know, I got almost as much love for Elvis, man. This is tough. Oh man, you don't even listen to Public Enemy. Public Enemy, man. Um, I got a good story about that. Uh, right out of college, one of my first jobs was actually working security at the Middle East in Cambridge, and mm -hmm. um, I was fortunate enough to admit, um, shout out, shout out to um, yeah, shout out. To <laughs> you already know, yeah. Shout out to the Middle East in Cambridge, the Seder family, everybody over there. Uh, saw yeah, next door. Here. Rogan sucks. I mean, I, I I don't know. I mean, <laughs> not everybody loves Rogan. That's all I'm gonna say. No, I hear you. Even if he can scrap, he scrap. Joey's a so public guy. enemy, right? I had the I had the pleasure and the honor of actually working. Um, public enemy came through the downstairs Middle East in Cambridge, and I actually was working security. I I was actually given the job of. Um, guarding the ramp to the green room to the back door, and it was. It was intense, man, and it was definitely a fire hazard. They probably had about 700 people down there, but I actually got to meet Chuck um, personally. Yup, Chuck D and Flav. Yeah. I dapped up with them. Yeah, it was amazing, man. So uh, they signed. I got a couple autographs and stuff, and they dapped up with me. And uh, I'll wrap it up on this, man. So I'm, I'm guarding the ramp, man. And I was much bigger at the time, but I had. You know, everyone, hey, yo, Chuck, Chuck's my cousin. Let me back, Flav. Yeah, yeah, everybody, everybody's everybody's cousin. <laughs> Bro, and these dudes were 6'5", 300. Like, it was, I, I stood my ground. I still don't even know how. But like I said, I was a big dog back then, too. Um, But so anyways, this dude comes back. He's just looking at me to just let him in. And I and I checked him. I'm like, sir, you know, I can't let you in. The, the manager runs over. He's like, that's Professor Griff. What are you doing? No one knows what yeah. Professor. No one knows what yeah. Professor Griff looks like. They know Chuck, and they who, know. Uh, who, didn't know who, who didn't know what I know what Professor Griff looked like, dude? See, he had a. He had a. He I had like a, Joe a, Rogan. Most, you know what I mean? I like Joe Rogan. The most you know Professor Griff. Out there in the world, man. What are you talking about? Yo, that dude, Professor Griff is a chick. I had no idea what Griff or Terminator X looked like. Terminator X was a postman at the time. He wasn't even there. But you yeah. know, my bad. Shout out Professor Griff in Public Enemy. They did so much, so many great things, man. I, I love those guys. Welcome to the Terror Dome. I mean, you were so militant, you got kicked out of Public Enemy. That's militant, bro. Um, but let's let's get to your album, man. Let's talk Please. about you know, yes. break down your album song by song, man. It's yeah, gonna be a good time. And so what we did was basically we didn't we didn't go to the explanation. We picked ten records. He picked five. I picked five. He picked the extra one. So there's eleven records we're gonna break down. So here we go. Number one. Uh, so Boston Riz, Riz, and Miz mixtape again on all DSP platforms. We're yeah, platforms. buddy. Run those numbers up. Uh, you know, I, I said date, various dates, you know. Uh, length of this mixtape is uh for the 11 tracks is 28 minutes. On other platforms, I only I think it was, it's only 10 tracks, right? Yeah, that, that sounds platform. about right. Yeah, so uh let's go. Number one plague featuring Steve. Is it Machina? Steve Marchena, yes. Marchena. Nachi, Chen Chena. Marchena. 
All right, cool. So Stephen Chai. So all right. So he's it a took guitarist. me a while too, bro. It took me a while to guitarist. get that as well. Guitarist, right? Just wanted to introduce him to the, to the crowd before I break down that the single. Absolutely. So uh, Steve Marchena is an amazing guitarist. He's a Berkeley alum, uh, multiple degree. He, this is what he does, man. And I, it was such an honor to work with him because that's literally a cat. Twenty years ago, that when I first got decided to go hard with music, I was like, I want to work with that dude. And it took me twenty years to be good enough to work with that dude, but. Berkeley alum, multiple degrees, uh, plays out all the time. This is how he makes his living. Has about 50 students, 100 students, and he's actually an on-call professor for Berkeley. So it was such an honor. And this song, I love this song. Um, you want to talk about it first or you want me to talk about it first? Um, no, you talk about it first. But, yeah, Steve Marchena, thank you so much. The guy's a beast. All right, so uh, Plague, man. Featuring Steve Machina, um, produced by Rockwood Production. So I just want to let everybody know, we're going to remind everybody, but I'm pretty sure every song was produced by Rockwood Production on this one. Everything I put out last year, I'm all in on Rockwood, man, like as a producer, as an engineer. Of course, I'm going to branch out, but I, I've I've been up front with Rock and, and told him, man, I will work with him till the day I go upstairs. I, I love that guy, and I can't say enough, man. All right, so you selected this record. So I'm gonna every time I introduce a record. So this one's play. You introduce. You, this is the one one of the ones you pick. Um, I do like this record. The beat has a, a futuristic sound as Boston Riz goes Mad Max on his vocals. The streets are corrupted. Fuck drugs except weed. But uh, yeah. Um. So what? So plague, man. Talk about yeah. plague, man. Let's talk. Yeah. About yeah, so I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always going through uh, Rockwood's catalog on Beat Stars, which you can just write in his Instagram bio; it'll take you right there. And I hear this beat called Plague. I just left it called Plague, right? And um, I, it was just so captivating. It was just so, it, it's like its own thing. I, it's hard for me to explain. It's just an epic beat. It's an epic composition by Rockwood, and. A lot of times, I, I well, every time I'll, I'll hit him up and say, you know, Rock, what is this? What does this music mean to you? What is the, you know, why did you call it Plague? He didn't really give me much on this one. And he's a man of a uh, few words, honestly. But when he speaks, you listen, you know what I'm saying? So he had called it Plague. And that's, I just incorporated that into the whole concept of the song and the hook and whatnot. And, and that's what I came up with. And you know, really, Marquis, you know, I always want to have a positive message, man. Mm -hmm. I've battled substance abuse myself. And I've lost so many close friends to to drugs, you know. So that's what I came up with. You know, Plague is, is about it's trying to rally people to get off drugs and to be careful and to just kick. It's like a really like a, a rally for people to, to beat addiction, you know. And, and if you listen to it, you knew it. We knew it. We know there's a plague. We know there's a fentanyl epidemic. We know this. Everyone knows it. And this is just a song trying to remind people that are struggling. Get off the shit, man. You know? But I love yeah, I do like that one. And and I this mean, is the thing. When right. Steve Marchena graced that and you hear his riff on the hook, it put it way over the top, man. I'm I can't say enough about Steve Marchena. Um, you know, it was such an honor to have him on a couple records last year, and I can you know, we're going to be touching on other things. I will definitely be doing at least two more records with Steve. Shout out Steve Marchena. And um, I love that song, dude. I just love it. Are you one of those artists that are open to, uh, you know, criticism and not just criticism, but like, are you open to sharing your story? You think you think one day you'll be one of those speakers or, or are you a, a natural born preacher? Like, I like. You know, you went through all this stuff. Explain, explain a little bit what you what you, you want to share. I don't. I, I'm not gonna. I don't want. No, I'm trying to get right no, 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 no. That's that's amazing. That's an amazing question and and way to you know, um, I can really relate to that man because, you know, honestly, the Rock Sanctuary. That's what I call my last year's collection of singles. The Rock Sanctuary LP, um, is a tribute to my mom's album that she put out, um way back and it really inspired me and her album oh, your mother's an artist. What the hell is going yeah. on? your mother's yeah. an artist i'm gonna send you two songs after we rap because yeah, this is crazy i'm telling First you man on the, on the podcast. 
my mom is my mom is way better than me. So she put what? out an album. Yeah, she put out an album in 03 on CD. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait. She has an album and not just singles. Yeah, she put it oh, on. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna get you all. I'm go go. No, I'm just. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> no, but this is the thing. So what I did is I'll and I'll send them to you right after this, Maki. Uh, I put out two of her songs as singles, um, because. When she put it out, it was on CD Baby. And back then, it was really just on CDs, right? So I will send you two singles of hers. And I'm pretty sure you're going to want to review them. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, and the thing is, so her album was called Roving Sanctuary. My mom is a devout Christian. She yeah. brought me to Christ at a very young age. My mom is an angel. She's my, she's my everything. She's my inspiration for this. So my album was called Rock Sanctuary. And, you know, I don't, I don't push this on anyone. I am a Christian. I'm proud of that. I try to do the right thing. I try to help people treat them the way I want them to treat me. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm an open book, man. You know, you know that. And um, I will always be upfront about my struggles. And I will. I made a promise to always have a positive message in my music, so I can relate to that and then some, man. Like I really can, bro. All right, man. So. Thanks for sharing. That's, you know, that's all, you know, it's just like, you know, thank people, you, man. Well, thank you for asking. Cause we're not that vulnerable. They might be vulnerable in records, but not in person or interview. Yeah. You know, I just, I'm like you, we try to be organic with genuine and it's like, why not just let it out, man? I, what am I going to do? I'm not on front street. You know me by now. <laughs> let's, go ah. to, let's go to number two, man. Higher ground featuring Tina Andrews and Tony. Uh, is it is Tony Shaboon? Tony Shamoon, yes, sir. Again, produced by Rockwood. All right, so on this joint, this one was uh, selected by you. I like this one too as well. With the help of the features, Boston Riz gives us a family vibe. Uh, with Rockwood on the beat, uh, Riz is finding ways to be a good role model for his family. Let's talk about number two, Higher Ground. Yeah, You want me to start? I just I already explained it. Now it's your turn. My turn. Not, okay. I, you, I, I, I talk about the record. That's your oh, turn. You just threw me the rock. Okay. Yeah, I just threw you the rock, man. Come on, man. This way. I'm trying to. I, which way I'm throwing? Okay. There you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, high ground. Speak on it. Talk about higher ground. Oh, absolutely, man. So, higher ground was a composition, you know, an instrumental that, of course, came from the master himself, Rockwood, and he had a re originally actually called it Street God, and I was yeah. like, whoa, and just the vibe of that music that beat that instrumental it was it was just so right up my alley and um higher ground is actually a tribute to um a dear friend of mine that passed away and also my godfather so rest in peace joshua miller and rest in peace caesar rizik that's a tribute the concept of that song is a tribute to the love of your family the work ethic to provide for your family down here but also a tribute to your family that's upstairs and if you listen to that first verse that gets repeated, um, can you feel me looking down? Um, that's written from the perspective of your loved ones upstairs looking down. And the thing was, it, it was so deep, brother. Like, Josh went by the name of Jack Diesel. And if you're from the pan, if you're a real one from Boston, especially from out of pan, you know who Jack that's Diesel man. is. And he was like a big brother to me, man. And um, the thing about it was, we were doing things on social media at the, at that time. It, I was more into the physical fitness industry and we were doing like boot camps and stuff, but he, he would have, uh, I used to spit with him on Hiawatha Ave shout out Hiawatha Ave in Mattapan. Oh, wow. He would have been, he would have been in the studio with me, bro. He would have been rapping verses. And so I felt him come into the studio and, um, that's what came to me, man. It was from his perspective. So, that's a legit tribute to my my um my godfather and basically josh was like my big brother so i love that song and having tina andrews come in on the hook you know, shout out tina andrews she's uh she sings with angelina in the unit angelina hightower shout out and um yeah we'll get we'll hear a lot more about tony shamoon but even tony shamoon they, they really made that record and that song is very dear to me so rest in peace to uh to my two big dogs upstairs and I love that song, man. That's the song. That's what's up. Because, like, you know, certain songs that uplift people, 
Mm -hmm. Do you ever like go back and listen to your songs? And do you have certain records that you that that uplift you? Um, at times, I'll tell you right now though. I'm just I'm hungry to put out new stuff. I will say that I'm kind of taking this little in between break, not necessarily a break, a break from releasing, right? But I'm so hungry to put out. The only song I put out this year was uh, "Evil World" with Kalada, and that's kind of how we linked up, right? All of a sudden, Rockwood was like, "Yo, watch yeah. watch the broadcast," and then yeah. uh, next thing I know, I, I I see you reviewing that song, and at the time, I'm going through a hard time, right? Like, we're not gonna get too into it, but I'm literally in the hospital, and I and I saw you reviewing my song, and it, it just melted me, dude. It was such a good feeling. It, what? It, it really you inspire people when you do these reviews because it's 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 helpful. You know what I'm saying? But I just love it. I totally love it. That's dope. I appreciate it, man. I, I didn't know, you know, so, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, it's like music for me, you know, music's magic for me. It's like certain yeah. music, like, it hits me and, and, and it heals me, you know? Um, so absolutely, man. That's the thing about music. Like it can, it can take you back in time. It can heal you. It can make you laugh. It can make you cry. It's absolute magic, dude. You know? And that's the thing, right? Uh, say I'm messaging some shorty or I meet someone and they're like, I don't like music. Like, Okay, like you don't like any music at all. They're like, no, nah, I don't. Crazy, it's, right? I don't hear that often, but I've I've heard that. A I know, I know, but I'm saying I might be a psychopath. You better run, run, boy. Like that's not right. If you don't like no music at all, keep stepping because that you might have to. Cool. Hold on, you might have to do number three. Blick them. Let's go to number three. Blick them. <laughs> I rock wood. You like that, right? Uh, so number, you pick this one too. Uh, mm -hmm. The tone gets dark and grimy, allowing Boston Riz to get off a couple john wick professional shots get the black hoodie out where's the hoodie at Ghost. let's talk about it man blicker. let's talk about blicker man okay here we go so you know i'm a, I'm a rock and roll guy like i said and, and um i find myself in this amazing situation that i, I love hip-hop and rap almost as much you know and mm. so i'm we we did cold nights which eventually became endless games we did a few joints and, and i'm i'm trying to stick to my rock roots and then i'm like i gotta do some hip-hop i'm with that dude you yeah. know and so i had a couple homies one of them i fell out with the other one is my brother chris rizek who we're solid you know what i mean and they were chris rizek and some i'm not gonna say his name because blah, 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 we ain't cool no more <laughs> we ain't cool Flick em. Flick em. Flick em. So, but I was like thinking of my brother, Chris Rizek and, and this, uh, I don't know this, uh, can you swear on here? Yeah. 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 You swear on the show. This piece of shit. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. And, and, but at the time he wasn't a piece of shit. Um, they were really the only ones, man, that was supporting what I was doing. And so I said, I got to put these cats on, like, we're going to do some rap. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to, I'm going to get some other MCs involved because it's a dream of theirs. And if I can facilitate that for someone, I'm going to do it. So I'm like, I go on the catalog. Like I said, uh, you can get to the beat star Rockwood beat stars right through the bio and his uh, Instagram. And it's mm -hmm. Insta is I T S Rockwood productions. It's Rockwood productions. But so I just click on the first one, man, because none of his stuff is bad. I just click on the first one and the beat comes on for Blickham and I didn't even know of this type of rap or hip hop. It's a that's a trap beat. Am I am I correct? Yeah, I would say I would say yeah yeah yeah. I, would say. I really find that to be a trap beat, and and I'm listening to it, and there's no like I just it started visualizing in my head, and the vibe that I got was that I was in like a black Escalade in a rap video going to kill someone. <laughs> like that's just what I got, you know. Hey, but that's 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 what inspires an artist. Like yeah. you gotta live in the moment. And I was watching a uh, 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 Ghostface and Big Daddy Kane interview each other. It was crazy. I'm like watching this today, and uh, they're just questioning each other. Mm -hmm. And um, they kind of reminded me, of, you know, some of the some of the words that you just expressed. Let's go to number four. So y'all go check out check out. First of all, respect Big Daddy Kane and Ghostface Killer. So just go support them anyway. They still rock. Yeah, can I say something quick about Blickham? Yeah. So. I, I said to Rock, what does this mean? Like, this means kill someone, right? And he's like, he beat around the bush, you know? 
He's like, no, I wrote it. I made it for like a dark and mine artist. I'm like, rock a blick is a gun. Blick him. And, and he's like, all right. Yeah. But like I said, I always want to have a positive message, bro. So I wasn't really cool with just like writing this catchy little hook about shooting people. So if you listen, it's a teaser of a song, right? It's a, it's a hook verse or hook. It's a little teaser. It's a short yeah, one. Yeah. People love it. So if you listen to that verse, I prayed on this one, man. I'm like, I got to put a positive spin on that. So that's not about just killing people. That's about killing an unethical, lying drug dealer that knows they're selling fentanyl and says otherwise. So that's how I made it a positive. It's like being a, a superhero in a sense. Yeah, being a superhero. Being, that's all. That's all. That, it's a superhero record. Just, just change it up, the dynamic. Let's go to uh, number go four. Yeah. Good Old Days, produced by Rockwood. You, you selected this one as well. Mm -hmm. Not the Trump Good Old Days. We talking the good old beats. We talking the good old lyrics. Uh, generational gaps are causing divisions. Uh, that's the message I got with this record. Uh, good old days. Talk about it. Yeah, it's just like um, kind of the concept that came to me. Just a one, uh, obviously, just another great Rockwood composition. It just got me thinking about this new generation um, in general and how there really is a lack of respect. You know what I mean? And how if you in a lot of ways in the golden era and just 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 back a couple decades or just go back, there was to me, you know what I mean? I'm not young, I'm not old, but to me, respect was more of a loyal thing. It was it was more of a practice thing. Like there was me like me and you have mutual respect, and we're all about that. This new generation lacks that. You know what I'm saying? So that that's kind of what came to me. Um and I do, I miss the good old days, man. You know, like Cause this new generation, God bless them, but I don't know, man. They, they're mouthy, and uh, there's a lack of respect, man. So that's really what came to me. No, hundred mm -hmm. <laughs> percent. You speaking, you speaking, <laughs> right. speaking the truth, man. That's what you just said. Artists reflect on um, the environment, and that's what I was. That's that's the, that's the thing I had to bring far earlier about when I was talking about Big Daddy Kane and uh, Ghostface. But they was talking about that. They were saying like. Mm -hmm. We record in the moment. Back then, we recorded in the moment. I came in the booth. I just came from a shootout. I'm not saying that's what he said. He I'm might saying. talk about the shootout. You know, what I'm saying like, well, now nowadays you got these keyboard gangsters, and it's like yeah, yeah. it's like everything's virtualized, and, and you're all hard on your little texting and your keyboards. Back then, it, they didn't play it like that. And back then, more people actually understood and practiced mutual respect. So that's yeah. a little bit about the good old days. No, hundred percent, man. Mm -hmm. so let's go to number five now. So we got the Riz and Miz mixtape again, y'all. Go check it out on all DSP platforms. Mm -hmm. But this is finally I get to pick a record. Now nah, I'm just joking, but I, it's the way we the way I mixed it. I mixed it in I you know my exactly. Five. So endless games remix featuring Steve, uh, Martina, the guitarist again. Uh, so this is the one I picked first. Uh, this 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 the uh, the rock record you play when you're fighting. With your girlfriend or wifey, it's a heartfelt track that hits the soul. Uh, yeah. You can feel the pain in Boston Riz's vocals and his mm -hmm. vocal cords. Uh, it's a great song, great record. Uh, you know, it's something you. like I really felt like I was just like, thank you, man. Goose, give me goosebumps, man. Talk about endless games, man. I'm, I'm glad to hear that, man. Thank you so much for those kind words. So, endless games was was actually originally called Cold Nights by Rockwood, and that is actually first song i did with rockwood since we remixed it and got a guitarist on it and my, my vocals put some extra vocals and, and really shined it up but that's where it all started with me it was cold nights me and rockwood right from the jump and um yeah it's definitely and i asked him in the beginning i'm like you know what what was that supposed to be about what what'd you write and he said he really and this is me in a nutshell man he goes i just knew that was for someone who had a lot of pain and I was like, well, I must be home. You know what I mean? And um, that's it. I hear the music. I, I need to work on being able to write a song without the music. But realistically, I hear the music and it falls out of the sky. And, and I don't really know what the song is about till it's over. And even then, I never want it to be about one thing. But Cold Nights absolutely is about getting off the pain. And it definitely is about those hurtful games that, you know, the opposite sex can play with you. and. The, the, it just gets ugly, man, and it, it's the games never stop, right? You know what I mean? And and hearts get broken, and yeah, so you you hit the nail on the head on that one, absolutely. 
um speaking of music what instruments do you play sure so i mean i'm you know i'm proud to be a musician and like i said i'm i was called to this that saved my life so absolutely singing is my primary but i do play a little piano i play a little drums and i play a little bass that's what's up man thank you so man usually, usually i do side notes and i'm I just saying like you know after that you know track five i wrote you know there's uh real pain with this artist you know and then like you know i go to i go to track six was which is called wish this is one of one of the ones i picked uh the classic rock contains with this feel good and energetic track boston riz is playing daily and running out of wishing stars um talk about wish man sure yeah um and this was kind of in the beginning as well and um i was so rock would tell you the same thing I was so high in the beginning and every time I go in there, I get this natural high from creating and working with the genius like rock. And, um, so literally like the first, the, the next three songs after cold nights, which I picked that off the catalog, he just started chefing in front of me. I go rock. What's the next song? And he picked something from the crate and then he started lacing it. Like we just wrote them on the spot. Songs oh, okay. two, three. Yeah. And wish was like, I challenged him. I'm like, dude, get me some real guitars. You know, even Steve Marchena thought that was a real guitarist. Um, so he, oh, he whipped up. I like yeah. those records. I don't mean to party, you know, part of your blessings, man. But, yo, I love those records that you like. And then I because I go look and I, you know, if I could find it and I try to see, oh, that was a guitarist. And I say the name in the review. But yeah. since sometimes they don't say it, I'd be like, oh, it was a sample. Damn. Yeah. Even Steve got fooled on that one, man. He, he is a wizard. My, you know, they're both wizards. But. Yeah, that's just what came to me. Um, you know, and Rock had something. He he brought up the Wish Upon a Star, and and it's 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 its own thing, man. And and I, I do I do have to say, like that that sounds like all real amazing. The instrumentation, the samples that he used, that composition is amazing. And that's just what came to me. It's hard to even explain what that song's about. It's definitely like you said. I mean. I got a lot of pain, you know, and music helps me get it out. And, and you can hear that in Wish, obviously. But, um, yeah, I love that tune as well, man. Thank you for picking that. Yeah, man. Let's go to another cut I picked, number seven, Coming Home featuring, is it Ian Beth? B Ian Beth. Yep. Ian Beth. Okay, I just yep. want to make yep. sure I'm saying Ian Beth. Absolutely. And just a quick I, shout uh, out to Ian Beth. He's the other guitarist I used. And I just, guys, I've been, I was so fortunate, Marquis. You know what I mean? These features are. These are people I've wanted to work with forever. Yeah, so. yeah, hundred percent, man. They, they, this is, this Shout is, out E and B, the Shredmaster. I, I like, I like what uh, what he did. Let me kind of explain a little bit. But uh, mm -hmm. so I'm coming to age. Uh, you know, it's a catchy rock, holy track that gives mm -hmm. off a bit of devilish ways. Boston Riz had fun with this track. The music and Riz vocals mirror each other well. And you know, I get the message: don't give up. Uh, you yeah. know, talk about number seven a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. It, it definitely, um, and this is a this is a reoccurring theme, right? Definitely about the pain of life, um, about the incessant struggle, and, and about persisting through it. Like like you said, don't give up. And like I'm never trying to force my faith on people, but I'm going to have a positive message in my music, and you know, it, it's encouraging people to get through though that adversity, those struggles. You know what I mean? Don't check out. I mean. I felt that pain and um, it's reminding you that there is, um, there is a higher power and you know what? Jesus will return like to straight up, you know, and we will go upstairs. We will be rewarded. So it's, it's a rally call to get through the adversity and the pain of life. But in, at the same time, be reminded that there is a reward for us people of faith, for people that do the right thing. I believe there is a reward. So that's kind of the gist of that one. I like it, man. I like, I like Thank you, the explanation, man. Uh, let's talk about number eight, Just Breathe remix. Uh, Rob oh, wow. Christian and Ian, is, is it Beef again, Beth? You I'm got sorry. it, Ian Beef. Ian Beef, okay. <laughs> no, you got it. I'll be chopping up names, I got a lot, man. But, um, it's tough, know, the first time you say a name is tough. Yeah, yeah, usually, like if you're not familiar with the, you know, the mm -hmm. stuff. So, you know, just breathe, man. Uh, you know, you hear the truth uh, and reality in Boston uh, Riz's lyrics. Uh, 
homelessness is real. I, you know, I got that from the record. These mm -hmm. cold streets can make you lose your breath. You know, speaking of um, mm -hmm. just breathe. Uh, talk about uh, number eight, man. Sure. So, um, you know, this one is also kind of called Mass Ave as well. And this one was literally, um, you, you nailed it. it. It's a rally call and a prayer for people that are battling homelessness, people that are on their last breath. And, and more specifically, um, it's kind of a rally and a prayer for, for what's going on on Mass Ave and the Methadone Mile. This mm -hmm. is a, we're trying to get this message out there and, and bring awareness to it and try to help these people that are so sick. Um, so that's really what it is. It's a prayer um, for people on that last breath that are, that are on those streets, man. And um, that's a deep one, you know, and I really, with that one, I would really like someone to hear it and maybe it keeps them around, you know, maybe they're on that last breath and they hear that song and maybe, you know, maybe they open the Bible or they just, they go inside or, or they, maybe they don't take that last shot of dope. You know, I, I don't know what to say other than it. That's a real deep one. And it's really a rally call and a prayer. But like you said, people that are homeless, people that are vicious addicts that are at the very end. I mean, that would be my dream. If someone could hear that and maybe not take that last shot, someone could hear that, you know, and open the Bible, man. So it's a deep cut. And um, I love that song, man. I stand behind it. Oh, man, that's crazy, man. Like, I, I, I love it, man. I love the record, man. Thank you, man. Um, I'm trying to think if I had, um, I got a question. It's, it's a question from the, for the next record. But no, so number nine mm -hmm. is uh, Better Days Remix, uh, Rockwood Productions. So on this one, I say this track hits, the, hits like Ted Williams when he uh, played for the Boston Red Sox. Uh, Boston Red shows his versatility with a rap. Song is fire, man. Um, was that you rapping? That's the question. But I got another question. But talk about no. better days, and then you know what's up. Absolutely, that was you rapping. Okay. No, so what that's my brother. Big shout out to my brother Chris Rizik, man. Um, that's another of a little teaser format where oh, okay, I'm I'm doing the hook, and then my brother spit that verse, man. And that verse, I gotta what's say your that name. So what's your brother's name? Chris Rizik. Chris Rizik. Yeah. Okay. That's how you say my name properly. Shout out Chris Rizik. And, you know, I definitely got the best out of him on that. I told him what I was looking for. I wanted white light. I wanted, you know, I wanted the truth, man. That song was called the truth at one time. And, um, it's a heck of a song. And yeah. yeah, that's, that's my brother on that verse. He went all in. No, I can't get it like that. I can flow, but he, he went all in, and I'm, I'm also Maybe, that. I thought it was you because he, he sound like you. I don't know. I'm like. That's, when I say that's my yeah. brother, that's really my brother. You know what I mean? And the same thing. Like, Who is this I know. Like, he's, a, he's a gifted artist, man. He, he's he's coming around. He's a gifted artist. You know, um, when it's in your bloodline, it's in your bloodline. And, and it's funny because, <laughs> yeah. some you know, other people have said that too. Like, wow, you guys sound like each other. And, you know, that's my brother. So shout out to Chris Rizik for laying that verse down and. I really like um, that hook that I came up with. Uh, I was really feeling that. And, and the music by Rock is just, that, that's a banger. You know, there's an extended oh, version man. of it as well, but I love that song, man. Yeah, let's get to number 10, man. Another banger. Actually, number nine was my last record. I told y'all we picked five a piece. He picked six. He got away with six. <laughs> this fifth pick is number 10, James Brown, featuring Tony uh, Shimon. Uh, this song grew on me. It, it, you know, it's one of my favorites now. Uh, R.P. to the, you know, of course, the legendary James Brown R.P. Uh, this yeah, song really. rocks like Mr. Brown on stage. Uh, I think James Brown would have loved this record. Ah, oh, dude. You know, yo, Come man. On. It's, it's, it's funky like his cape after after he works out. You know what I'm <laughs> Let's talk about it. James Brown, what's up with that record? Yeah, so, I mean, you are the connoisseur, man. You know, you nailed it. Um, but just... Real quick, shout out Tony Shamoon. Tony Shamoon is is a world renowned, world known percussionist. Um, mm -hmm. he he's literally from Beirut, Lebanon, and he is that guy. I'm I'm so honored. That's my cousin. I'm so honored to be related to the Shamoons. His father's a singer. You know what I mean. His kids are coming up super talented. The Shamoons. Um, shout out to all the Middle Eastern community. My dad's from Lebanon, so shout out 
all my Habibis out there, Habibi Browns and uh, Tony Shamoon. I can't thank you enough, brother. But th this is really cool, man. So I show up, uh, I show up at Rockwoods, right? For the first time ever, I'm like, I'm like 15 minutes late. Tony oh, Shamoon. Yeah. Right. Check this out, right? This is magic. You can respect this magic, man. So I'm 15 minutes late and I get in there and Tony Shamoon's already in the booth. He's doing his thing. He's got, he's, he's glowing, right? This guy just glows. He loves music. He's a freaking genius. So I come in and he's already in the booth working with rock. He's laying down the hand percussion and I'm listening to the beat. That was a custom beat. Okay. Mm. As you get further along with Rockwood, he'll all of a sudden you'll come in and it'll be like, here, I made this for you. And it's just like magic, bro. So check this out. He's in there laying down the percussion, um, which elevates everything. Anytime you, you can hear that, whether it's a guitar, whether it's a uh, Tina singing or a percussion, it, it takes it to another level. And, and that's what me and Rockwood are really doing is taking it to another level and, and trying to start our own trends. Um, so I'm blown away. I'm listening to this music like, yo, hey, Rock, this ain't, on, this ain't on the catalog. He's like, yeah, I know. This is a custom. He's like, you're welcome. I was like, okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting fired up, right? Yeah. And you'll hear this on like uh, like a Habibi funk or American funk, the funk, whatever. I love James Brown. Rockwood loves James Brown. So we want to do like dancey James Brown or maybe Bruno Mars, like something to get the masses shaking. And this is one of them. So this had such a James Brown vibe to it. The hook came to me right away. Very simple. Get up, get up, get up, get down. Get up, get up, get up, James Brown. That's all I had. And I'm like, that's just great. what came to me. So simple, it, but it's mm -hmm. great. Right. And, and that's that's my Actually, style. Mm -hmm. is, is, is this record, uh, you know, the, the most played record? Do you follow up, the, the guy, the uh, algorithms and all that stuff? It's up there, man. It's definitely top What's five. The absolutely. Record, then? What's the most popular record? You know? I mean, uh, right now, I mean, what, straight up numbers? Yeah, for streaming or whatever it is. Blick them. So. Blick them. Blick them is. Yeah. But, <laughs> but James Brown is right up there. Higher Ground, those are top three. Higher Ground, James Brown, and Blick them. Higher Ground, okay. Yeah, they're all doing good numbers. So, like I said, that, that little simple hook came to me right away. And get this, right? Yeah. So I go in and lay that down. And like I said, it just... We all said it. I'm like, this is like this is some James Brown shit. And I was like, I know. And we were feeling it. And so the get up, you know, that's that's the James Brown thing. Get down, get up, whatever. I'm, I'm getting chills from this. And um, so oh, Tony shout out, gets, oh, shout out. I told you my coach, shout out to my co-host, Ben Frank, man. James Brown is the godfather goat, no doubt. I told you, man, he's a co-host, man. But he, he, he I'd be like, you the co-host. Like, how would you talk about that? You the co-host, man. <laughs> See, he's still working. He's Shout out to him, man. Man. Thank yeah, you for coming in. Man. I told him when I get paid for this podcast, he's a, he's he's getting break on all first, man. Yeah, he better get a piece. That's so, that, so this was so magical, bro. So Tony gets out. He had laced the percussion. Um, you know, I'm in the control room. I had come up with the hook. And I went in and I started laying down the hook. And then the scream came to me, right? The James Brown scream and the get up. That's a James Brown thing, the whole vibe. And when I go in to lay down the hook, Tony Shamoon, this is not just a uh, hand percussionist. This is a masterful musician. He does it all. So I come out after laying down the hook, the most of it. Mm -hmm. um, I spiced it up a little after, but he's writing the verses. I did not write those verses, and those verses are gas. If you listen to the words, what do you mean? Who are you? Oh, so you, you, you Tony you Shamoon, the writers writing for you? Never, usually never, but I get out of the booth. Tony's like, Here, look at this, cuz he's writing the verses. I'm like, That's gold. So, Tony Shamoon, big shout out, Tony Shamoon, uh, the whole Shamoon family. Um, he wrote those verses and it was mm -hmm. magic. I usually can't sing other people's words, but that's magic. that's my big, big cuz. So, shout out, Tony Shamoon, because. If you listen to those words, it, the verses are gas, and you know, it's just a very sexy song, man. You know, and sometimes I mean, sex is a big part of life. You know, I'm trying to keep everything positive, um, positive message. But then I'm gonna have those, them sexy bangers, man. And 
Yeah, and I love that man, song. Yeah. Come on, I love man. that song, though. Let's talk about is that San Diego Bros. High Love, y'all. X F O X O. Laura, A K Queen L. Is that Queen L right there? Oh, Queen is L's coming in. Is that Queen L? That's Queen L, aka Laura Shea, aka Queen L. Shout out. Let's talk about her right now since since she's on the screen. Let's give her some shine. Okay. Uh Queen L, aka Laura Shea, has become a very good friend of mine. Um, she's got a heart of gold and she reached out to me. I've only known her for I say a few months, really. And she literally reached out to me um on Facebook. And I'm like, oh wow, she's cute, you know. <laughs> and she's a musician. And I'm like, I'm like, wow, this is cool. Next thing you know, we're talking, and she's just she sent me right off the rip, uh, Maki. She sent me a couple cover songs, both songs I'd cover, and I'm listening to them. It's Whoa, a, a, what a Tennessee. Listen to this, Tennessee whiskey. You got to hear this on SoundCloud. She's got to re re release it. Tennessee whiskey and tears in heaven. Eric Clapton, Clapton, and uh, can you release covers? On Spotify, yeah, there's a way to do it. On like SoundCloud or something. No, there's a way to do it. You just check it off. Um, but Chris Stapleton is my guy. Eric Clapton is my guy. So she sent me those, and she sent me her first single. Um, as you know, TTT or that's the type. She released that last year with a with a very good uh producer and engineer, Lichtenstein or whatever his name is. But um. PTT didn't get me right away. It it really didn't, but some of your favorite songs kind of grew on you a little bit. A little bit. Some of your favorite songs would take a few bro. By like the third, fourth time, I was all in on that. And those covers, like I really when you're a musician or a connoisseur like yourself, uh or a singer, when it's it might sound bad, but like when you listen to someone else singing, it's almost like and especially at the independent level, you're almost like just waiting for them to fuck up. Like, uh, she's gonna flub a note. She's gonna flub a note. She didn't miss a note, man. She did not miss a note. And shout out to TTT. That's a great song. Uh, I reviewed it, man. I know it's a great song. I reviewed uh, that song. <laughs> she, she reached out to me, and it was so flattering. And it, it was, it was such a. As you know, we can get at this next time. I and mean, this winter was horrible winter for me but I, I had people like you laura rockwood colada legit man y'all don't know it but you helped me get through it um she's a real one and i uh promised her she she reached out to me she helped me get through this horrible time she's an amazing friend and i listened to those two covers and i listened to ttt and i knew what time it was like she is very very gifted it's not just the bars she can sing. So I promised her to get her in with Rockwood. And um, she's got two singles coming out within, I would say, the next couple months. Dillagaff. You know what Dillagaff stands for? No. <laughs> Do I look like I give a fuck? Dillagaff. I'll be oh, featured on... I thought you was like, okay, I get it. Okay. So yeah, I, I, uh, like, so, I don't know what the hell that means, man. That <laughs> Do I look like I give a what? So. She says I'm I want to make yeah. the people shake their booties. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, Let's get to number 11. Then we can speak on a lot of other things after this. Uh, yeah, but watch out for Dillagaff and Skyline. They're coming. Ch yeah, Salute. Yeah, yeah. We know. Thank you. We will be watching out for them, man. The whole team. Mm -hmm. from the Rockwood, man. You already uh, know. Number 11, uh, bonus track. Uh, you know, on this one, 11. Uh, all you, all I need, uh, but this is by Rockwood. This is the, the last track and the one you uh, selected. The Soulful mm -hmm. Rock. Background is warm and allowing artist Boston Rays to concentrate on his lover. Uh, all he needs is her love. It's a dope track, man. You know what I mean? So, you know, I love it like a lover, you know, all I need. And you know, I, I, it's catchy, bro, man. Bro. Uh, it, it, it's growing me too. You know, it, it was it was a favorite of mine, but then it became a, a better favorite of mine on more listens. Yeah. Uh, talk about all I need. It's catchy. So man, one or uh, this is good because this gets me to a story that I have to tell you. Yeah. So after the um the first month of me and Rock, you know, I would go in there every week. I was um in there every Sunday at lucky 7 p.m. And uh after the first month was up, Rock reaches out to me and you know, he says, you know, yo, Riz, I have some people that like what you're doing. 
Mm -hmm. And they want to know if you're open to collaborate. And I just straight up, I was like, when I said, rock, as long as it has your stamp all day, next thing I know, I wake up, I'm on a group text with Ed OG. Oh, salute Ed OG, the Boston go. Come on, man. Come on, man. I swear to you, man. So I wake up, I'm on a group text with uh, Ed OG, Smiley, sick with it and Rockwood and shout out Smiley as well. I mean, that's a guy who, who deserves Everything that's coming to him, he's a very talented, smiley, sick with it. That's Rockwood's top guy, and I can admit it, that dude is nice, nice. Shout out, smiley. Anyways, I wake up on this legit thread with the Ed OG, smiley, sick with it, and Rockwood, and they're just getting all official with me, and I was like, wow. Like, I was just so gassed up. So we, what we did was um, we set up a working meeting. I, I met Ed OG, man, and I dapped up with him. It was amazing, bro. He's so down to earth. I dapped up with him, and he goes like this. He goes, your, your voice is dope, Riz. And I mean, that meant so much to me, man. Like, it was like I won a Grammy or something, you know. <laughs> I, met, I met Smiley. That was up there, too. And they had this vision. You know, they said, Riz, we got a lot of great artists in this yeah. Rockwood Nation, you know, that would well, that would about to do big things with that was doing big things with but we don't have a rock star they said you're a rock star and i said i know you know i do i do know and um they said we have this vision whether you look at like Aerosmith, run dmc or limp biscuit and what i call rock hop so you're mm -hmm. mixing genres of yeah. rock and roll and hip-hop and they they had this vision um and i said i see it too like that's a that's a neglected niche of a genre so they put together like 10 or 11 beats specifically for me specifically for this rock hop project me and smiley on the vokes um i was hoping to get ed og on there too uh -huh. um but you know what what came from it is um and just real quick they played me 10 tracks they were like riz be honest um you know what do you think's fire what do you think's not i liked nine nine of them were fire the tenth one just wasn't as good and what they did was they they tried to get a nice rock guitar in there for me and they nailed it so edo and smiley are rolling up right they're rolling up a backwards and i'm yeah. i'm taking my jacket off and i go over to them because i don't want to look like a lame or a square and i said yo just so y'all know i blaze but i'm not blazing until after i get out the booth and I guess Rockwood didn't tell him. I think he wanted it to be a surprise or mm. uh, maybe they were too busy to listen. Um, yeah. But they go, yo, you're singing tonight. I was like, I said, that's what I do. You know, and I was laughing and they're like, okay, all right. And they go, you know, talk to Rock and make sure that's cool. And I looked at Rock and he was like, oh yeah, it's time. It's go time. So Rockwood made that beat in front of me right after they left. All I need. It blew me away. That's I love everything he does and everything he's doing, but that one specifically, that is my favorite. That is my favorite music he's ever made for me. Um, and I just it reminds me of that night, which was so magical to meet Smiley and Edo and to get put on like that. And it was a it, once again, um, I, I have my dark times, man. I battle depression really, really bad, you know. Yeah. And for me to meet Edo and Smiley. You know, for Rockwood to, to stamp me like that, That's that, meant the, that meant the world to me, bro. So that night after they left, I wrote the wrote, wrote and laid down the hook for All I Need. And I also wrote and laid down the hook for Evil World, which you was with Kalata, who's on yeah. fire himself. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, that song is not for a specific female. Um, I got to switch my stuff up. But most of the time... Most of the time, my writing is general, and I want it to mean different things to different people. Of course, that's a classic love song, um, but that wasn't about one shorty. That was directed at them all. You know what I mean? That's about four yeah. billion. <laughs> 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 right <laughs> Thank you so much. And I mean, you got to you got to touch base with Smiley because he's now in the south, uh, the Southie Parade, the St. Patty's Day Parade. You seen him in Rockwood on the float? Like tearing it up. Yeah, I saw them on the float. Tearing it up, man. So yeah. I hope 
I hope Rockwood and Smiley get the money they deserve and the acclaims, and and I honestly think they will. Oh, they they will, man. You know, like yeah. you know, it's funny when I when I meet certain people or, or talk to them on the phone or chat with them, even a, either via text or even email. I can I can kind of like sense some type of energy from them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, like, meaning like, do they have vision? Do they have energy? Do they have a positive flow? Like a positive vibe? Like what? Are they, you know, are they ambitious? Uh, you know, are they driven? You know, and. Uh, mm -hmm. Rockwood, man. Don't, don't even worry about him, man. He's good. <laughs> yeah. He's got that. Yeah, that's the key word with him is drive, man. Yeah, Rock Rockwood is good. I I I bet a hundred percent. A hundred percent. You know, and that's a cat. Like he'll talk to me about creating a legacy in the back of his chair. He, knows what he, he knows what he wants. You know what I'm saying? Let's get to the, let's get to these questions, man. Yeah. Um, let's go back to the verses. Then I, you know, then I maybe ask you a question too. But I'm going to use the verses re recently. We did, but I'm going to be ended with Mick, ja Mick Jagger and Elvis. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Prince versus Michael Jackson. I mean, I, of course, I, I love them both. They're both amazing genius. Rest in peace, you know. But uh, <laughs> for some reason, I don't know. I got to go with Prince, man. I don't know if it's because he played the guitar and he didn't have the uh, the issues with the kids or something. <laughs> but then again, you know, Michael Jackson's dance songs, I mean, you, you can't touch them. But for some reason, an all-around person and everything, Prince is my guy. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think you know, I would agree. Prince, Prince is just a musician, you know, just a yeah. – he was an artist. And I think Michael Jackson was a singer. Um, so, right, so right. Well, the great singer, the greatest singer, one well, of the greatest performers, artists, you know, like that. one of, no, one yeah, of the best artist, singers artist. of all time. That range, yeah. I mean, and I feel for him though, man. Like, you know, he never had a childhood, man, and, and you know, it, it really messed him up. And rest in peace to both of those genius, but Prince, no, is I understand. rest in peace to Prince and Michael. That they, of course, they you already know with, the, with their greats, you know what I'm saying? He's still playing, uh, versus David, is it Growl? From the uh, Foo Fighters, how you they say his last name? Gro. Uh David Grohl. Yeah. David. David Grohl. Dave Grohl versus Eddie. Is it better? Eddie Grohl. Vedder. Yeah. Oh wow. Eddie, Eddie Vedder is, is the singer of Pearl Jam. Yeah. Pearl Bro. Jam. Foo Fighters. The the main singers. Bro. Let's go, man. Come on, man. I gotta go with Eddie Vedder, man. When I heard when I heard Pearl Jam when I was a kid, um, yeah, man. when when I was a kid, man, and I heard that album, it was called Ten, and it was basically called Ten because it was ten tracks, and they were ten hits, and it was fire. Damn. You know that that changed everything for me. But then again, Dave Grohl, I'm reading his book. He's a ridiculously talented musician. I mean, that's a guy. He was playing drums for Nirvana. And you know he does everything, but um, I love I love them both, but I gotta go with Eddie Vedder on that. He says, "Foo!" All right, let's go. Let's go. Uh, Bruce Springsteen versus Bono. Versus who? Bono. You Bono. know Bono. Bono. <laughs> I'm gonna say, oh, yeah. No, and that's a tough one for me because I remember oh, listening. Oh, what? I remember listening to Octune Baby, the YouTube album, when I was a kid. And being being totally blown away, um, and you you really you really like a I don't know what to say like a mind fucker with these verses, man. It's so hard, bro. Yeah, I, I, like, I, I do, I, they all different for every guest. Yeah, every guest. Yeah, you really like it's so hard, man. Yeah, um, but guess. for me, this. <laughs> for me, right? Like overall, I gotta go with Bruce, man. And it's it's funny that you put him on there because. <laughs> I'm literally right now going through a big Bruce Springsteen thing. And you can hear my voice. I've, I got too excited. It kind of blew out my voice. Just talking, man. Respect to the respect to you, man. This PHH. Respect to the boss, man. Respect to the boss. Man, respect to the boss but the boss, I've been, I actually have. The boss versus Bono. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen is in my CD player right now. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, and I'm on all day, but let's go to the next verses. I know, I know he's a, you're a big fan. But we got Start David up. Lee Roth versus Rod Stewart. Once again, both genius. Um, 
spot. I mean, Rod Stewart, I think, is more for my parents, maybe. Um, David Lee Roth, I go David Lee Roth on that. And that's another thing, like, it, this, like you said, music is such magic, right? Like, you say David Lee Roth, it takes me back to when I was, like, seven years old, fucking chilling with my brother, watching MTV and being like, what is... Stories. Yeah. I remember watching... It affects your brain. It takes your brain places. Right. That like takes drugs. Me. Music is drug. A drug. Right. It's the only thing that keeps me off of the actual drugs and it saved my yeah. life. But that takes me back to when I was seven and just watching David Lee Roth on MTV and being like, who is that dude? Like, he's so cool, you know, and he sounds great. So David Lee Roth all day. All right. I got one more. Uh, ben Frank, if you have one or two, put it in the chat because Ben is part of the show. If you got a versus, say it now, Ben. I got one more and then I'm going to ask um the artist as well if he has a versus for me so uh I, my last one for you is tom petty versus phil collins you're a jerk man like you really it's so hard but uh, Hold on. i mean <laughs> <laughs> uh it was tom petty versus who tom petty phil collins phil collins they're killing me man as much as i love Bill Collins, um, Tom Petty, rest in peace. Tom Petty, the first album my mother ever gave me was the Tom Petty album. And, you know, something we can get into at another time, you know, pandemic, uh, I was down in Florida for it. I, I had a lot of adversity, right? Like uh, a lot. And um, I was just watching Tom Petty bios and just just studying his whole catalog and remembering, oh, my mom gave me that. That's the first album I had. Tom mm -hmm. Petty, you know, when I do covers, when I do karaoke, open mics, whatever, that's my guy, man. So Tom Petty all day. And wow. he's such a genius, man. He, yeah, he's he got is. so many songs. Yeah. He was an absolute genius. So Tom Petty all day, air day. All day, a day. Air day, day. namaste. And, uh, you know, uh, this is the opportunity if you want to give me a verse, a verses, if you don't, we go to the, uh, I got uh, one more question and we're going to, we're going to, um, go to sure. promote, and promote. Do you have a verses yeah. for me? I know. Uh, it's, it's yeah. Yeah, like, I'll give you a doozy. I get a little revenge here. Tupac or Biggie? Tupac or Biggie? Yeah. That's easy, man. People ask me that all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Uh, well, but tell me why, though, after. I want to know why. Because they're the most popular artist that's that passed. No, no, life. after you tell me your winner, I want to know, like, really touch on it. Like, why do you think the other one's better? Oh, in that sense. Um, yeah. Who is it, though? Tupac or Biggie? You didn't even tell me. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I think I like them for, for different things, though. So, lyrically, uh, I'm going to go... I'm gonna go um pop, right? Okay. Yeah, but I'm going Biggie as the overall artist, artist, because he has he has the five elements when he raps. When he when okay. Biggie raps, so Biggie's the winner. But Biggie when Biggie raps, he's he he is the five elements of hip hop. And mm -hmm. more, he mm -hmm. breathes hip hop when he when he spoke. Like he was hip hop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And when I say better lyrics, it was only because Pac had eight thousand more songs than Biggie. Right, you know right, right. Saying? And I thought I thought Tupac had a you want to come on the podcast, boy. So uh, um, so my, my boy, right? So anyway, anyway, right? So um, I'm trying to have to do a podcast, man. Uh, so anyway, right? So uh, so Biggie is wins, but uh, you know uh, he had less material, and I think Pac was more of a poet, more of a, a better writer. Yeah, it's that game is so hard though, right? Like genius versus genius, pick one. It's like ah oh, man. So amazing, it's amazing, man. She's saying Biggie, and then he, he's saying Pac. So it depends. Now, it honestly, now, it, now, de uh, it depends where you live, though, right? You know what I mean? No, People no, over here, a lot no, of them are gonna no, say Biggie. No, no, because I, I love Scarface. I could put Scarface against a lot of rappers, and, and they lose. Well, I mean, East Coast, West Coast, man. Sometimes what coast you live on? No, nah, I live on the East. I'm, I'm telling you, Scarface is one of my favorite rappers. What are you talking about? I'm telling you, like, where's where's Scarface from? I'm from Boston. Scarface ain't from Boston. 
So, so that's what I'm saying. Like, the, your, your theory is good, but it, yeah, no. I know a lot of people biased to their, their cities and states and, you know, West Coast. Yeah, that's West such 20. a tough one. That is such yeah, a tough one. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But no, no. Oh, Ben did give us one. Ben gave us one. So, uh, we'll <coughs> with Martin Lawrence. You want to go first? Say again. Ben Frank, my co-host, says Will Smith versus Martin Lawrence. Verse, you got to pick one. Remember? But in what aspect, though? That that's what the verses is about. It's whatever your aspect. It's whatever you want. <clears throat> that's why Will, when you ask me about Will Smith, I can break it down how I want. You know, what I'm Will saying? Smith. Like, yeah. Will Smith. Will Smith. I you know I probably would go uh, for overall. That's a tough one, man. It is a tough one. That's why I, I, I like the verses. I would go Will Smith too. Uh, I think Martin Lawrence is a better comedian. Mm -hmm. Age, uh, better probably uh, television shows. Right, right. And Will Smith's a better actor. I know, like those the couple successful cats right there. You know, wow. Yeah. So, um, yeah. You know, respect the you know Queen Elsa's. You know, uh, was raised on Biggie, ready to die. Uh, oh, we got another one. Here we go. Uh, J Cole versus K Dot. That's going on right now. You got uh, Kendrick Lamar. Going against uh, J. Cole. Have you heard both of those songs, both of those records? Can you comment on that? I, I haven't heard both of them, but I'm I'm J. Cole on that. That's just, that's my guy. I like, like what he does a lot. I'm going to give some shots out. Mm -hmm. and, it, and the reason I'm giving shots out is, you know, I'm going to tell you something. You picking J. Cole without even hearing both records is incredible. Uh, guess what? J. Cole did come out on round one, J. Cole. That's, if you go back, you go listen to those records, it's round one, J. Cole. Uh -huh. You have an eight-hour podcast about this. I did it in 15. I did it, I think I did it in less than a minute. Y'all go see that see it on YouTube. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, come on, man. Round one, J. Cole. Let's go, yes. let's go round two. We, we, we ready. But they both they keep it on the wax. It's it's, it's friendly. Mm -hmm. And um that's nice, it. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, we really don't want to see anyone get hurt, and we've been blessed where. Yeah, yeah. Nah, but it's, this is all. This is oh no. This dude keep going. Ben, I said, give me one or two. We gonna give me twenty. All right, we gonna do one last one, and we got we gotta get this guy out of here. Al, uh, Al Pacino versus Al Bundy. Wow. Wow. You no, know, he's just trying. He's just messing with us now, bro. He's messing with us. You know, it's funny because I like them both. Like. Who doesn't love Al Pacino as an actor? I got, man, I love them both too, man. I used to watch that show with Al my dad Bundy, all the time. Al Bundy, come on. I'm a Al Pacino on that one, but yeah, I got love for Al Bundy. Come on, I mean, now. Al, Al Pacino is a better actor, but I mean, uh, Al Bundy, man, you just, it's just the love you got for him. I, you know, I got love for Al Bundy, man. I might, I might pick Al Bundy over him. I don't how know. about how about Christina Applegate back then, though? Ooh, boy. Yeah, yeah, she was fly. Kelly Bundy, I got love for Kelly Bundy. I grew up with her, so you know it's not creepy. So I want anybody. Oh, women, <laughs> women, women, women might be like, oh, he's talking about Kelly. Bundy. she was like, no, no, no. I, man, I was her age probably going. Will Smith because he been through too much. Ah, huh, sympathy from the lady. Oh, great. Ha 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 ha! I would have laughed too, uh, Ben. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I have no sympathy for Will for for being disrespectful. Um, you know, oh, that was crazy. It's not. Yeah, man, love them both. Uh, oh, okay. She has one. Uh, she's gonna give us our last one. The Queen's gonna give us our last. So Queen L, you have the Queen last. One. Foxy Brown versus Trina. You want to talk about that one? I'll be honest, man. I don't know much of Trina. I know I don't know much about her. Yeah, yeah. I I, I reviewed Trina's album, the one that but I, I mean, was, I think even if I did, Foxy Brown, man, that's a bad bitch right there. Yeah. yeah. That's like a pioneer. That's an OG. It's you know, it's not even a tough call for me. I know it might be a tough call for y'all, for some women. It's gotta I be fun, right? a fan. I wasn't a fan of Trina until I I, I got I got a little old. I heard so I heard of stuff I was familiar with, but I just like, yo, she's too. She's too, she's just too ghetto for me. Like too much. It was just too, too much. Yeah. And uh, you know, and when I did go back and listen to her album, I did review it. Y'all check it out. It's on this channel. You know what I'm saying? But uh, if y'all want to see, but Foxy too, I would pick Foxy, Foxy all day. Um, you know, Foxy's a spitter, just like he said. Mm -hmm. All right. So now we're coming down to the end of the show, man. So we want to promote, promote, 
promote uh down below i do have your instagram uh account mm -hmm. here thank uh, you let you know um you know you bless this podcast and thank uh you, great great uh guests and we had a great conversation and i really um think when people watch this they will learn and yeah. uh, hopefully feel better about thank themselves you, um talk about let's talk about promote 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 man talk about what you got going what you got coming maybe people just working with are you working with queen l whatever you want to do this is the, right this is the time right now right on man thank you brother uh so boston riz you can find me on every single platform boston last name r-i-z um shout out to everyone that i've worked with last year that i will continue to work with rockwood productions um colada smiley ian beats steve marchena chris rizik ed og um mike di natale he's another one you got to listen to queen l um you know shout out swagger multimedia jose guzman on the video end and um yeah i mean this queen l these next two joints yeah gonna be crazy man Dilla gaff's coming and then she's got skyline coming um i'm hoping to get another young artist fathom you've heard a little of his f-a-t-h-u-m but um you know god is good man and this music we're really my music really trying to push a positive message and i've just been so blessed and you know ever since i met rock and edo and smiley i just always promised myself that i'm not gonna drop the ball like i know what time it is you know and i i want to get this music out there i want to get it to the masses and it ain't about the money it's about getting the message out there and just being proud of my art so thank you so much man this was awesome yo man come on man come yeah. on man come on man stop playing man stop playing man stop playing love it so we got queen l my favorite songs of boston riz are jane brown better days and all i need yeah that's what's up and we got we gonna have a lot of your favorite songs soon queen l so we'll be we'll be we'll be repeating those soon i i, I agree with the queen man those are three bang 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 bangers blah, 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 blah. and respect to everybody that came through of course ben frank my co-host with the most this man he be in the chat giving me ideas questions all type of stuff jeff uh from david mass came through earlier stopped playing man um you know other people came through but it was kind of shy wasn't speaking you know i kept seeing the numbers go up but no one was speaking but queen l came through yeah and she dropped his knowledge and some, some i'll some, tell you what man i can't say enough about queen l aka laura shea the girl he's a spitter and a singer and like you know to have that double threat and i consider myself that as well i mean there's a lot of it's gonna take you far man and and you, it's gonna stay fresh right because you're not just you got it all man we know i love you you already know girl dilla gaff i'm it's an honor to be featured on that she's putting that out and when you hear skyline you will get so hooked on that joint it's so it's so upbeat so congrats to Laura. Say, I, I don't want everybody to, to, to leave so quickly but uh we shutting down the podcast but we are gonna leave with a record um so what i want you to do is um while i'm setting this up mm -hmm. give us give us uh you know um let me know what your favorite songs are on this mix tape that we did together i don't know man like <laughs> i like all my songs like i stand behind them, them exactly. you know what i mean but yeah. i mean at the top at the top james brown's up there um I love better days, higher ground. I mean, if you look at the Spotify guys, please throw me a follow, th throw me a like. Um, Boston Riz is on every single platform. It's pretty accurate. I mean, if you look at the top five songs on my Spotify, I like them, you know, but the thing is this, they will get better. <laughs> you know what I mean? I will elevate. So when you hear, when I start releasing stuff this year, I hope you love it, man, because I can tell you it's gonna get better. So, the endless days, endless yeah, games. You, uh, you have future plans. What, what's what's going on? You 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 taking a trip or something? What's going on? Sounds like you. So I'm gonna be in the studio tomorrow. Um, 
I'm going to be celebrating my birthday tomorrow with Rockwood. Oh, um, yeah, happy birthday, dude. Thank you so much. It's on the 16th, but I'm going to be celebrating tomorrow. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and I'm I have gonna, some. Yeah. I'm gonna do birthday music. It's a gunshot for you. <laughs> I got some special plans, man. Queen L might be coming by. Um, Tyler Montgomery is a percussionist slash drummer. AJ Ferry is a bassist. Um, I'm going to be in there for five hours, really get really doing work. And um, there's there's nothing better that I'd want to do. I I am going to be taking off Tuesday. I'm going to be heading out west. And, I, you know, I'll get into that a little more next time or on my channel. But it, it's time for me to kind of to clean up my act. You know what I mean? Like, I have some things, some lifestyle things. I got some substance demons. I got some depression demons that I got to fight and I got to kill them, you know? And so for me, this is a big step. I got to be even the weed, man, as much as I love weed and I will come back to it. I got to kick everything. So I am yeah. going to be, I'm going to be heading out West doing some detoxing at different places. Um, just going, you see the three X's I'm going straight edge dead sober so I can get as much done as I possibly can because substances and depression has really I'm 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 lucky to be here, bro. Real talk. And it's really plagued my everything. I, I there's so many things in life that I didn't finish because of those demons. So I'm gonna be taken off. No one's gonna hear from me for 30 days. And you know, even after that, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be on this mission, man, just to, to get myself better and um and and do the damn thing so thank you man i appreciate that all right man so um hopefully they can still hear me yeah i can you can hear me yeah oh because i'm like i'm like uh i don't see us on the screen for some reason i, I see myself know. just not you you see yourself on the screen you see yourself mm -hmm. on the screen yeah it's, uh, i'm not setting up like i wanted to set up why is it not it's, stop sharing view tab all right, man. So we just gonna get out of here. We gonna play the record, man. We gonna get out of here, man. Thank um, you so much, D. I appreciate you so much, dog. You, have you, and, and, and you know, good, good, good times on your travels, man. And thanks again for coming. Thank through. you. And I, right after that, thank you so much. And after that, thirty days, I'll be, I'll be hitting you up, man. Thank you for everything, brother. Real talk. One hundred percent. Let's play this game. Endless games. Let's end it off with that. Every time I hear your voice, all I want to do is cry. Every time I see your face, all I want to do is slide away from pain. Lord, I don't want to stay. She's playing endless games. Them games she always plays from day to day. Lord, I don't want to stay. She's playing sass and games. Them games she always playing. She's playing. She's playing. She's playing games. Dang. Thank you guys so much. She always plays. Thank y'all so Every much. Every time I look around, yeah. all I see is your smile. Every time that I go by, all I want to do is fly away from pain. Lord, I don't want to stay. She's playing endless games. Them games she always plays from day to day. Lord, I don't want to stay. She's playing Thank you, Steve Martina. Games. Check the solo, baby. Check the solo. The game. The game she always plays. Every time that I walk back, all I see is painful eyes. Every time that you're around, all I want to do is Fly 
shy away from pain. Lord, I don't wanna stay. She's playing endless games. Them games she always plays from day to day. Lord, I don't wanna stay. She's playing incessant games. Them games she always plays. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Peace out, man. Thank you, brother. I'll be in touch.